Good evening. I'm going to do a sit and talk because <laughs> the rains and the weather and the animals distracted me from doing anything else. But I've done something unusual. I made a few notes because I thought there is something that we have to discuss and that we do and it's out there all the time because we know it's true. And it is the dichotomy between who so many Americans are who are compromising us and those others who are fighting for the Republic. Bankers and lodge depositors act reckless and corrupt. Look all around us. Politics and politicians can't keep our Congress in order. And some sought to overthrow that government and nothing has happened to them. They have no shame. Talking about it doesn't do anything for them. All around us, the right to be let alone, privacy, is at risk. The most dramatic one being what's happening to women that we're trying, not you and I, but those people in our society who do not respect women, who would manipulate them, and who would take dominion over them. How many persons of color or who have differences in religion or have any difference that they must suffer and be treated so lightly? What is happening in a nation in which guns are the answer for the most trivial differences among our citizens? That's a failure of leadership. How have we fallen so low? One commentator says that leadership is found in two main paths, manipulation and inspiration. This morning I got a, an email, I get lots of solicitations as perhaps you do, and this one said that someone had heartache that I hadn't signed a petition. And I wrote back that I did not think anybody who was supporting a cause should be trying to manipulate me by thinking I'm guilty of not doing something soon enough rather than appealing to my belief in the issue for which they sought my support. I told them that as long as they wrote things like this, trying to manipulate me despite whatever support or not I have for these issues, I would not respond. Because I will not compromise myself with those I agree with any more than those I disagree with. Nor do I think anyone should. Nor without dis discipline, without some standard of action, how do we proceed? Now you hear me talk about Aristotle from time to time, and one of the famous uh, paraphrases I make is that uh, he says, uh, nothing like having a target improves your aim. Well, do we have a target? Um, he is concerned in his philosophy in a fairly complicated way with outcome. What are we driving toward and so forth? Consider the fact that he was the teacher for no less than Alexander the Great and thought he would have done better by him had Alexander spent more time as a student. We, we study, or some of us do, the Socrates uh, uh, publications, but also Socrates' uh, different uh, problems, his walking discussions of issues that are, were as true then as they are now. Now, people, uh, if they're manipulated out of fear or terror, uh, out of anger or uh, competition with another, out of envy, um, that's a manipulation. What we need are leaders that inspire. We have had them at criti critical times in our history. Anybody who's followed me knows I think Garland is not such a leader. The head of law enforcement at a time when we need to remind the nation why laws mattered, how we rightly change them, those laws that matter when they go wrong, what a constitution means as a set of values for going forward. Are we inspired by the values? Are we inspired by the why of the government? 
how do we resolve that we have so many who uh, we can't talk with or tolerate or pretend we agree with, though politicians tell us we should? When do you concede your dignity, your values, to talk and compromise with a person who does these offensive things I've outlined as simple examples? Bankers who cheat, depositors who take advantage of a system until it doesn't work and then they flee to the hills, people who are racist, people who are violent, people who would take away the right to be let alone for everybody, and particularly women, people who would overturn uh, the, the rule of law to get what they want. I've said from time to time how the Supreme Court is protected in its strength as a lawgiver by the trust that we have for it. That's been broken. What we do have, as we see it across the nation, as we see from time to time important cases in the courts come forward, we are seeing acts of civil disobedience that teach us there are people out there who understand what we are about. We are not a monarchy. We are not a place of chaos. We are not a place of individuals doing whatever they want, whenever they want, no matter who is hurt. That's not America. The persons that we, we need in the nation are empathetic. They are uh, also, however, fighters for what they believe in, that they, are, they care for others. There have been philosophers and psychologists who've written how when somebody is in trouble, a complete stranger, that we find that people reach out and risk their own life to save a stranger. That's how we are connected. We are social animals, but we cannot be a social animal with a person who is inimical to the values that we think are rudimentary, the ground of our being in a political sense. So we do what we can do. It may not be a lot, but the more of us that are doing it, we the people, the more we have an effect on the society we live in. And we can't wait for George to do it. I remember in grammar school and even in high school teachers saying things like, oh, there's always the people who say, let George do it. Well, what if there is no George? What if you are the only person? We have to do it. We have to speak about it write about it. If you can contribute $5, terrific. Run for office. But here's something that I haven't thought was necessary to say until recently. And it is that we cannot support Republicans, any Republicans, for any office. We, we cannot listen to their lies. And I've seen them, and you've probably seen them as well. And now we have artificial intelligence ads so how do you protect yourself from the lies in those ads? You say to yourself, who published it? And by knowing that, you know you can't depend on it. By knowing that, if it's supporting a candidate who is pretending to be independent, you know not to support that candidate. We are all that we have. And it's mattered before. It has made the difference. I've had... Uh, several occasions in my lifetime to think in a living meditation, you will, of Lincoln. I had an opportunity with Ari Melber and several other people to go to Cooper Union to talk about the impeachment of Trump. And being in that building and thinking that Lincoln had been there and his statement that a house divided could not stand. Well, the way I take that is a house divided cannot stand, but it cannot stand if it is divided in its critical values. Those of us who believe that we are all equal, those of us who believe we are entitled to a representative government that represents our views, those of us who believe in the laws and the Constitution and how we should change them, all these things protect us in our rights, in our families, and at peace. But there is poison in the water, and it's generated by Trump and those who mimic him and those who expect to be rewarded while breaking the law and lying should he get elected again. 
it is astonishing to me that we have a constitution that provides a remedy for people like Trump and his allies who would bring down our government just to have the power and to win the election rather than to serve the general welfare and the elements of our constitution that provide what we're supposed to do. I was thinking about uh, the Gettysburg Address as well. Uh, you know, as a student, I guess I memorized it. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this nation. You know, that was those were important words then. And we were at a critical juncture. And we were at war, brother against brother, family against family, geography against geography, north and south, and even within those sections. But Lincoln, toward the end, said, from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that great cause for which they the last full measure of devotion gave. We have to give our devotion to the nation. We don't want to have to do it. You could say we shouldn't have to do it, but we do. Because there are men and women out there who don't accept these values. And we have to stop being, quote, polite, in my mind, slightly deceptive, to pretend that these people agree with us. Oh, we're going to meet with them. We're going to talk with them. I mean, we're doing that right now about the debt limit. Is that true? But we are dealing with a world in which we see every day incidental violence of a nature we haven't seen, despite the fact that we have so many guns. Across the world, <clears throat> we look at Ukraine. And right now, both sides, Russia and Ukraine, uh, have caused 300,000 people to die. That's what we are facing. That's what we have to deal with. So we, the people, have to dedicate ourselves in the small and large ways we can, depending on our positions, our platforms, what we know, how we think, what we can do. And that can be a mighty force. As Robert Kennedy said about the situation in apartheid in Africa, it can move mountains, the little rivulets that come together and a mighty force can wash down these who would obstruct our nation from continuing as a republic, from representing its people, from allowing them to be equal and allowing them to have access to the courts, allowing them the rights that we should all have. In opposition to that, we have those who hate and lie and steal and try to minimize things, fight to reduce the funds for education, retirement, health, uh, for our children. This is a significant problem, and it's, it's come home to, well, continuously, of course, but it came home to me today when a, a friend and I had a short conversation, and it was, where are all the heroes? And, and he's a Republican, but he's, uh, I think, a progressive Republican is the way I'd put it. And I think he was surprised that I was very impressed with Teddy Roosevelt. I read all these biographies. I talked to people who wrote the books on it. I suppose the fact that I was in New York made a difference. And he talked about, you know, mixing in to the times, into the things that matter during the times that we live. And this life of ours is a grand opera. And we each must play our part. And sometimes it may be a happy romance or a comedy. But right now, we are fighting for the life of our democracy. Nothing less. People night after night say things and tell stories, and we say, oh, my God. But what do we do about it? Nothing. You know, we had, uh, on the federal level, uh, federal level, we had and still have Black Jack Smith. He's appointed in November. No charges. Question, question, question. No charges, charges, charges. We have the woman down in Georgia. <clears throat> she has tapes. I could have had that case in a week. I'll bet you any prosecutor worth his salt's not tied in some political way to some back-ass notion of how we should deal with Trump would say the same thing. We have the prosecution in Manhattan. I think it's a solid prosecution. I'm glad we have a man who would come forward like that, a prosecutor with a team and go forward. I'm glad we have a woman who challenges uh, Trump's misogynist attack and bullying of women. I think that's terrific. I'm glad the state attorney general in New York is going after Trump. What I'm saying 
is there is hope. We have vectors working to restore the republic, to preserve our democracy, and we have to do what we can. And I mean it, what we can. It may seem little, it may be great, and anywhere in between. And make sure you register to vote. <laughs> so I'm getting off my high horse here, and uh, uh, I'm glad I could visit with you in the evening. And tomorrow, <laughs> my other dedication to my clients aside, uh, I hope to get out and walk around outside and do a walk and talk. Thank you for listening, um, and uh, I hope this helps you uh, think about where we are and where we have to be. All the best. Bye-bye.